Okay, here we go. All right, you have the floor. Okay, so welcome to uh, Hacking Barriers to Entry. Um, the WIT PGH, WIT Pittsburgh, Women in Technology Pittsburgh interview workshop. So I'm just going to tell you guys right now, this is not going to be super formal. I'm just going to give you kind of the real deal. Um, I have been in technology for over 20 years as a developer, an architect, a manager, a scrum master, an entrepreneur. I've started a company, sold a company, and just recently launched another uh, small business. I've probably interviewed a thousand people or more <laughs> um, and interviewed probably a thousand times myself. So um, I'm just gonna kinda walk through this real light deck and I'm just gonna share some things, but I, I really want this to be more conversational. If you have questions, jump right in. Don't wait till the end. If something doesn't feel good to you, let me know. And uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's I want to make sure you get information that's gonna help you. So this deck is gonna be super duper high level. Um, but as we get into uh, any of these areas and you have questions. Do not hesitate to ask. Um, I prefer it to be more conversational anyway. So um, with that said, I should have introduced myself first. My name is Clavon Blair. Everyone uses my last name. And uh, I love technology. I love creating things. So I've been doing it forever. As you can probably see by the grizzled gray on my face. <laughs> um, so uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, uh, I'd like to do kind of a, a quick intro. It's like um, just get people's names, you know, what your specialization is. And I just also want to know if you're nervous about interviewing and, and why. And uh, we'll go from there. So I guess we'll start with we'll start with Allison. <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, any feel free to 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 take the floor. So do you want us all to to introduce ourselves to you yeah. so you get a feel for who's here? Okay. Um, I'm Allison. Um, I work alongside Gina and Shani with uh, for this program, Hacking Barriers to Entry. My tech specialization is uh, cybersecurity and now product management. Um, am I nervous about tech interviews and why? Yes, <laughs> I always get really nervous for tech interviews um, because I will feel like I really need to prep for them and then I over prep and then I feel I feel too scripted and then I go into the interview and I feel like I need to say exactly what I prepared and then I just get nervous and, and do poorly but when I when I don't prepare and just go with the flow I do a lot better so that's something that I'm trying to learn more about myself and like how I should spend my time preparing rather than cramming and writing a script and just like being comfortable with knowing what I know um and I'll popcorn um Shawnee since I know she's done tech interviews <laughs> oh yeah hi Shawnee you guys know me because I am Mr. Manager this week and thanks for showing up um <laughs> I was like yeah I don't see you <laughs> um <laughs> so yeah tech interviews um oh so my tech specialization is uh full stack development so um basically front end back end javascript ruby rails python django fun stuff and um yeah, my tech interviews tend to go as <laughs> like me being really nervous, uh, talking way too much. If I have coffee, it's like the end. It is just like a death knell for everyone in the room. Like nobody else is gonna get a word in. 
I will just probably end up talking about like something weird that happened to me in like sixth grade. One time I gave them Nixon fingers on the way out because I like had to whiteboard and I just like, it was something that I completely knew how to do, but I just like complete, I just panicked and like forgot everything. Just like wrote some pseudo code on the board that was like dot reverse. And then um, literally like walked out of the room like, all right, so I guess this isn't the job for me. So, yeah. um, but it's a good story for other interviews now. <laughs> oh, you can popcorn with someone. Did you name me? I'm just going to go anyways. <laughs> so my name is Gina Winstead and my tech specialization is non-tech tech. So dealing with the humans that work at tech companies, HR, operations, business development, SaaS, pretty much anything besides having to do with development work um, for tech companies is what I specialize in. And I get nervous for any interview. Um, Kind of like Allison, I, I try to over prepare. What I really tried to do, I think, is hit them in the beginning with so much information that makes me sound like highly intelligent that by the time I'm done with my intro, I've left them kind of speechless. So that's my technique that I like to do. I, I have a, a pitch ready for them at the very beginning of every interview to try to make myself less nervous. Yep. And I'm going to popcorn to Sydney since she's top of my list. Uh, I knew it was a, a matter of time. <laughs> Hello, my name is Sydney Gandy and my tech specialization, you could say, is um, Python programming because I'm hoping to get a job in tech that might be Python heavy or just use Python in general. Um, all interviews make me nervous. <laughs> I don't know if that's obvious or not, or if you can like feel the energy, but uh, yeah, all interviews make me nervous and maybe tech interviews might, especially, I haven't had any yet, but just the fact that tech is added onto it because it's like tech, like it's gonna focus on that. So I feel like if I don't get an answer right, then I've done something wrong, so. <laughs> there's that uh let's see i will hand it over to soul system number one are oh, you still muted linda oh okay yeah you're Hi, good everybody. hey yeah um like I, I, I was, I, <laughs> it's not easy having as many lifetimes as I've had in one life, right? Because like, I'm going to be like 60 in two years. I've had numerous jobs. So it's really different. I'm coming from a whole different kind of situation, right? And so I had to kind of, and I've actually taught inter interview techniques to, to young people. And, uh, and then and I haven't actually gone for an interview in over 20 years because, um, because of just life, whereas I wasn't actually in the job market. And, you know, I was spent like the last, I was caring for my mother for a long time. And so, and so I, I really wasn't in the job market. Uh, but before, before I uh, kind of, and then I was doing independent stuff and I decided to work for myself and run, um, self-esteem workshops for teens and and I was designing that and then I was writing I've always managed to kind of not work for other people right or at least do something that I really love doing right so if I go into like when I decided I want to be a youth worker I went into a club and I just love humans so much that they were like, we can't do this without you when I finished with the interview. And they were right because like, it was like, I, and then I, whatever, but it's just like, I really always love what I'm doing. And it, it shows when I walk in, when I, when I go into places, it's like, so, but anyway, there was a time of course in my life when I was much younger, when I was, uh, you know, unsure of, um, 
myself and what I wanted to do. And a lot of the jobs that I was going for were things that wasn't really in my heart. It was sort of like, you know, I got to make money. I've got to survive. I got to this and that. And so, uh, and those, those are the ones that, you know, I didn't get those jobs. A lot of those jobs I didn't get, right? Like I was like, oh, oh, I'm going to be a salesperson. Like my heart wasn't in it. I just needed some money to like, you know, whatever. So my heart wasn't in it. And I never got those jobs. As soon as I started doing something I loved, which was sewing, another again several lifetimes ago because now I have a machine that I don't even touch uh, and then I start I'm a you know I just do uh so the reason why I'm here and the reason uh the reason I don't know I I missed the other workshop because of a, an emergency and the reason why I'm here is because I need something from this right I wouldn't be here because like someone you can't like um force me to do something right? Like uh, no amount of, if something doesn't serve me, right? Like if this was a workshop about how to braid hair and I already braid hair, I'd be like, look, I'm going to miss that. And I hope that people can appreciate that, right? Yeah. Um, and it doesn't mean that I don't, that I don't care or I'm, 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 I've dropped the ball. It's just, you know, if I'm not there, but I'm here because I am, I'm actually, I've always loved computers and I've always been like, a, um, I, I'm a secret nerd and uh, nerd meaning that I, I always like, I, I always want to know how things work. Um, so I've started on this wonderful path of um, learning front end web development, which is like, I'm really just sort of addicted to it. I've always loved design and how things look and all these things. So I've just started on this career and I'm thinking before I roll up at those interviews, right, I need to know what I'm going to, I have no idea what they're going to ask me when I roll up. So I'm here and I'm so thankful to get this advice. And uh, so now I will pass on to, and Thank you everyone for this time. And I'm gonna pass it on now to uh, Tyneel G. Is that Tyneel G? It's a beautiful name, but I probably am not pronouncing it properly. No, I appreciate you. You actually pronounced it perfectly. Wonderful. Okay, yeah. I'm off, I'm off, I'm, mu I'm muting. Uh, I suppose I can give a visual to who I am as well. Hey, hi, um, good to see you guys well. Uh, and present. Uh, my name is Tanil Grant, and uh, my tech specialization has developed uh, into web development, front end development. Um, I am pivoting from a background in design and structural design and uh, digital rendering. Okay. So uh, that's kind of like my thing. I'm in the construction. I'm a builder. I get my hands dirty. Um, very textile, visual person. Um, so um, kind of uh, learning to build myself in this space so I can merge all the pixels together for the big picture of what it is my life will pan out to. Um, whatever that's supposed to be, right? Uh, <laughs> and I'm nervous about tech interviews. Uh, specifically um, two reasons. One, um, I'm nervous about interviewing in front of a older white male that might possibly just be searching for the things that I don't know to not give me a job. And the second thing I'm nervous about tech interview specific is because it's very black and white. There's a lot of memorization to go on and process and order. And sometimes when I get overexcited um, or nervous, I skip processes and I get things wrong and uh, it creates a little bit of anxiety um, and I end up over speaking. And so I think specifically with tech interviews, this is, these are my two things. These are my only two things that I worry about. I think I thrive in other situations where I'm interviewed and sometimes just interview um, to have someone like me and I don't even want the job. Sometimes I just want to interview uh, just because it's like a challenge to be like, can I get it? And it's like, I got it. I don't want it. Just kidding. I just wanted to know I still got it, you know, kind of thing. Um, and also to just refresh myself on how to like flex in those spaces and also to hold composure in those spaces. So with that being said, 
Um, this is brand new for me and it is a, um, like I said, male dominated space. Um, it is, I feel like uh, in my very small knowledge ability been kind of a white male dominated space. So in my mind, I, I think I'm trying to get rid of the nerves and prepare myself for that kind of seat. Thank you. Oh, I got a popcorn to somebody out here. How about Mia Crow? Come on down. Hi. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Tanil. Um, My name is Mia Crow. Um, I'm, uh, my specialization is uh, UX design. I am new to tech, kind of. Um, I actually worked at a job for 20 years before the job I have now. So I had like no experience with interviewing. So I was really nervous and scared that I couldn't do it. So I would prepare kind of, but I really wanted to get out. So I really did prepare. But I think what really helped me was I was trying to I, every morning I would have positive affirmations. So I would always try to build my confidence up. So every time I went on an interview, I would work on my confidence and it seemed like it worked. So, um, but with the UX design, I'm nervous because this is something that I don't know and I'm learning. So I'm not quite sure how I'll do. So that's pretty much it. Oh, so let me popcorn to uh, Stacy. Turn my camera. Thank you. Um, so yeah, Stacy Norrington. Um, and my path is the front end web developer. Um, so just I'm kind of like uh, Allison. So just in general, uh, interviews have always made me nervous. Um, but I usually try you know, give myself the pep talk, those positive affirmations when, when I'm hitting in there. And I kind of tell myself I'm the shiniest penny. Um, but for tech interviews, I think it's just in general, the, the unknown, like I've never, you know, um, done a tech interview. So just, you know, the apprehension towards that. And then, um, just thinking of head to being put on the spot and possibly having to do, you know, draw something on the whiteboard. I think I'll be kind of like, you know, Shawnee and just kind of freeze, even though I may know what they want. It's just in that moment, I could see myself freezing. So just kind of trying to constantly, you know, bring myself back to uh, reality and just stay focused. But so those would be my biggest. Um, and I will popcorn to Miss Paula. Hi, um, my name is Paula. Um, I am specializing um, in front end web design or uh, web development. <laughs> and um, yeah, like many others have mentioned, um, just general uh, interview anxiety. I have like social anxiety. So like that on top of it can like just like really compound my experience, um, but I have learned to like turn it on and off and uh, interviews, especially if I'm like going to a few interviews um, and can kind of get into the like a flow. Um, but especially for a tech interview, I've never done that before. So um, definitely, um, you know, just the unknown is really um, just like, you know, <laughs> nerve wracking for me and, um, I do have like, I'm not a great test taker. I um, excel in other things. And so uh, that's definitely um, a point of interest that I'd like to like strengthen. Um, and I will popcorn to um, Georgina. Hey, thanks. Um, so I, um, I'm Gina, um, last name Omeji and I um, am special, my tech specialization is Python. So I'm happy to learn that um, sit, oh, someone else is also doing it. Uh, do I get nervous about interviews um, in, in tech? I guess I would because uh, I'm, I, I tend to overthink things sometimes. I, I overthink the questions and um, I'm not sure if most of the questions are broad um, or how they may be posed. So. 
I think just practicing that would be um, beneficial um, to me. And I hope to um, attain a lot and, and learn a lot from this workshop. So I will popcorn um, Stacy. I think Stacy went already. I think unless there's another Stacy. Um, just me. Who? Who? Is that Russia? Yes. <clears throat> okay. Go ahead. Russia. I haven't gone either. Um, so my name is Russia, and my specialization now is UX design. I started out Python. And I've recently transitioned. So <clears throat> I, I am definitely nervous about interviews in general. Uh, I have not had a lot of interviews in my adult life. I am a mother of five, so I spend a lot of time at home with children. And I, I, I have everything nervous because I have I've never done, I haven't done many interviews, I've definitely never done a tech interview and just don't know what to expect. So, and I think right now, not feeling prepared. And I don't know how tech interviews differ from uh, regular interviews, I guess you could call it that. Uh, but just interested in, in learning what's expected and Definitely building my, I think once I begin to feel more confident in, in my skill set, then uh, maybe it'll take away some of that nervousness, but just, just not feeling prepared right now in terms of knowledge base in my specialization and not knowing what to expect during the interviews. And I'll popcorn to the other person who said they haven't gone. Hi, I'm Naira. My um, tech specialization is full stacked. And of course, I'm nervous about tech interviews. I'm, I get nervous about any interview, really. Um, I just like my anxiety just flares up and I just have like an issue speaking because I'm in my head so much. But um, what scares me the most about tech interviews is one, not knowing what to expect and two just because I'm so new I feel I, I kind of have like the imposter syndrome like I'm not going to know what I'm talking about when I go in there but um also like um like having a test or getting a test question like I pretty I do pretty well on tests but if they just give me like two coding questions I feel like I'm going to fail so <laughs> um yeah it's just all of it together is and with my anxiety i just i feel like the more interviews i go on the better it will be but just jumping out the gate it's really scary oh, I, I didn't go yet is that everyone can you guys Ari. Hear me? Ari. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, okay. Uh, my name is Ari. Uh, my current focus right now is full stack development, although I plan on branching out with that later. Um, I currently work in the finance industry, so I'm trying to change careers. I'm a fraud analyst for uh, PNC. But um, I'd say my biggest. Uh, biggest concern for interviews is like I'm one of those people it's like even if I know something front to back I'm still going to doubt myself in the interview process and so I kind of worry about um, things like that and how that might affect myself with potential job opportunities um, I think I just tend to overthink things too much but uh, I'd say that's pretty much where I'm at with it okay Anyone else? I can't see who's all gone, so. I think everybody went. Is there anybody else that needs to go still? Did Mia go? Yeah, yeah, I think Mia went, right? I think she was one of the, yeah, you were, yeah, in the I beginning, went. yeah. Okay, yep. Okay, cool. 
so everybody has kind of said the same thing. Everybody's nervous. I've heard imposter syndrome. I've heard anxiety. Um, I've heard, I don't know if I'm going to know enough. So if you weren't feeling that way for a tech interview, I would be worried about you. <laughs> so I'll just put it to you that way. So you guys are actually feeling the way you should be feeling whether it's your first tech interview or your 100th tech interview. So, um, so we'll jump right into this stack and this deck here. So what I want to cover is, you know, why uh, we give tech interviews, what you should expect, how you can prepare. Um, I pulled out the problem solving process but I, I wanna talk about that a little bit. I don't wanna to get too far into that. Um, and then I've just got some general tips here um, that you can use to get yourself through this process. Um, it's, it, it's a new process for you, so it's already gonna be kind of nerve wracking. And, and I'm sure everybody's heard all the horror stories of tech interviewing and this, that, and the other. Um, it's not that bad. You're gonna be nervous, but I say if I can do it, you can do it. So, all right, so why we have tech interviews. And please, I can kind of get swaggle issues with my clothes, but I cannot do decks and slides and all that stuff to make me super, super cool, so. Um, I'm just going to talk through most of this stuff. So again, if you have any questions, just jump right in because I want this to be more of a conversation. Um, because as we get through some of these different uh, items in the deck, if you got a question, it, it's going to be easier for me to kind of give you a little bit more information kind of real time. So we're just having a conversation. We're just, it's like we're sitting at the coffee shop and just hanging out. So no nerves, no nothing, whatever. We're just, we're just having a conversation. So, all right. So why they're tech interviews. So my first sentence here is, I always say that tech interviews are there for interviewers to find a reason to not hire you. And meaning they're, pes they're pessimist pessimistic about interviews and they want to exclude people fairly quickly by asking questions in some of the areas listed below. And I, I don't want you to freak out by that, but that's the expectation you should have when you go in. 90% of people performing the interviews, they're not even prepared to give you an interview. So they're already nervous about it. They want to get through it. And you're there to basically you know share who you are and um and your whole purpose in getting there is you're there to you're there to make an impression i always say you go in to not be an also ran and an also ran is like you know say allison and gina are or were running in a in some some race in the olympics they came in first and second. I'm running in the race. I came in a hundredth place. They're gonna get trophies or, or you know, whatever they get, badges, whatever they get. And people are gonna remember their names, but I'm somebody, I'll say, hey, I also ran in that race. Your goal is to not be an also ran. You may not get the job, but you want them to remember you. So before I jump in, any, any questions or concerns about even that statement. Okay, so going in with that knowledge, it actually puts the power of the interview in your hands. So you know they're not prepared. They're just gonna grab some questions together in five minutes. That's one thing they never tell you, but that's exactly what happens. So, and so you're kind of sitting in a sweet spot. So, but they're always gonna, 
try and exclude you by, you know, asking you questions about whether you have a master in programming language. They want to know um, how you organize or prioritize your projects or your development work. Um, they also want to know if you can clearly communicate any work that you've done or work that you're to do, basically that you understand what you're, you're trying to do. And they also want to know, you know, what's your response? How, how do you react when you run into, into something that you just don't have an answer for, you don't know how to do? How do you figure it out? And, and then there's also the, the question of what do you do to, to continually improve your skill set? And will you do it? And that question right there, will you work to continually improve your skill set? That right there is, you know, that's the job, continuing your uh, to improve. And if they feel like you can't do that or won't do that, I mean you're so you 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 have to be bought in on that aspect of this industry. And knowing that is going to give you a different kind of confidence when you go into an interview. And, and there's also, uh, do you think about tech trade-offs? And those trade-offs are more, uh, there are a million ways to write something. Uh, which way is the best way in your opinion and why? And the other thing is, are you likable and easy to work with? And that right there is, that's, that's the biggest one. Um, I mean, we're all either women or people of color on this call. So we've all experienced uh, what it means to walk into a space and you instantly know that, oh, they don't really want me here. I'm just, I'm an interview number, so to speak. And that happens a lot. But once again, it's like, it's something that you have to flip within yourself. It's like, hey, they may not want you here, but it's an opportunity for you to practice interviewing. Uh, I can't remember who mentioned it. Um, you interview, you, maybe you don't want the job, but you're really interviewing to get better at interviewing. So um, any questions, concerns there or? Larry, can, are you able to see the chat? There's some um, questions and comments in the chat. Um, I can read them if you can't access yeah. them. Yeah, I can't. I, oops, let's go back. Yeah, I can't. I can't even get to it. OK, so the first one is, um, I'm worried about being judged by my gender and race. And the second one is, mastery is a scary word if you're still learning along the way. Half of programming is Googling, isn't it? Yeah, so uh, the, I'll tackle the first one. So gender and race, we're judged on gender and race every time we walk out the door, anytime we walk through the grocery store. I went to Target the other day. I've got a mask on and I mean, I've got money to spend. I don't look like I'm gonna rob the joint, but I had somebody following me around the store. So there's an expectation of that as a person of color in this country already. You know what I mean? The thing is, you know that going in. Um, so if, if you know that, like for me, it's like, I don't care. I, there's a specialness about who I am as a person because of, of my race. And even my experience, whether it's in this industry or whether it's in anything else that I've done, um, you know, can can I cuss in this, or do I have to be super? <laughs> uh, it's recorded. Just <laughs> I, 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 okay. <laughs> so I, people who know me, I use the phrase "I'm a bad motherfucker" all the time. Excuse my language. I don't mean to offend anybody. I'm sorry. And I, I mean that from a positive space in that um, I've lived enough life in this earth and we all have. Um, 
regardless of what's going on around us, we're still here and our lives are valuable. And it's just realizing how valuable your life is just to you. Who cares what anybody else think, thinks? So I walk in that way all the time. And anything that I do, like I, I belong here because I'm, you know, a bad, you know, whatever. So um, you, you have to own that within yourself. You may not even quite believe it yet, but man, just start wearing that, that, that coat or those shoes of, of that, that strength in who you are as a person. And just, you've heard the phrase, fake it till you make it. But it's like, you, you have to walk into one of these interviews confident because, you know, some of us who've been in a lot of these, people want to try to tear your confidence down. Number one, to try to get you out of the industry, whether you're, uh, you know, a person of color, whether you're a woman. And, you know, the fact that you know that's there, it's, it's like playing a game at that point. You know, you can steer that conversation a little bit if you know you walk in and you know, oh, um, I'm really not wanted here, but what can I get out of this process right now for myself? It's my career. I own it. I'm not going to let you own my, my career. So I'm going to get something out of this, whether you hire me or not. And if it's me walking out saying, I'm going to make sure that anybody else of quality, whatever, they're not going to work here because of the experience that I had here. So your interview experience is a marketing experience for that company. So when you take that, you can take that out into the community. There's a company here in town uh, that's treated employees pretty badly. Um, but now they're having a hard time hiring people because they've marketed that in the, in the tech community here in town. And I get people calling me every day. Hey, do you know anybody who might be able to fill this role? And I just say, no, I don't. I don't. Because I already know what they've marketed, not just to me, but to people that I know and other people in the community. So um, the, the second uh, question, mastery of a programming language. So there is no such thing. And, and the reason why I, ask, I, I bring this up is because people interviewing you, they know that there's no such thing as the mastery of a programming language. And they, there's, nobody can know everything. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm considered an expert in about 10 different programming languages. And I'll be the first one to say, nah, man, I don't know. <laughs> Let me go to Google. So the thing is, um, when you go into one of these interviews, it's like you don't you don't have to know the programming language per se, inside and out. We talk about pseudocode a lot, which is really just your logical um, step through a problem to find a solution. If you can work that out in your head and write those steps down on the board, that's what you should take. Um, so they're gonna try and point you in that, in the direction of this mastery of this programming language. I mean, they're gonna test you on little things. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, how do you do a for loop? Or how do you, uh, what's, what's an array? What, what's the difference between a hash table and an array in this particular language? Understanding those 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 uh, data structures themselves, that's the that's the bigger thing. But how to render it in a specific language, I wouldn't even worry about it. You you need to just understand what data those data structures are in, in that instance. So, um, anything else before we move on to the next page? I, I can't hear you, I'm sorry. Hi, Hi. I Hi. wanted to thank you for everything and I didn't do it directly before. And also to say that 
I so understand what you mean about how we feel about ourselves, because what I learned was, um, and I had this, this thing that I say to myself, although of course you're always humble, you want a job, right? So it's not, it's no time to be like, hey, hey, whatever. But I have, I, I actually tell myself that these people need me. Yeah. Yeah. This company needs me. I have so much to offer. And this is what's going on in my mind. I don't go in and act like, hey, I've got the whole thing worked out. Yeah. But when I clocked that I that that I'm valuable and I have something to offer everyone, right? On, on any situation, even if it's just a reminder that they're racist. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah, whatever yeah. Yeah, you you know you, but but that whole thing about i think that whole what we feel about ourselves and what other people think about me you know when i let that d destroy my my day my self-worth my da, da 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 that's when i've given them too much power but i just wanted to say i'm so with you on that and thank you for for going there with that yeah it, it's like it's like what gina said um she's like i'm the I'm, I'm the I'm in the people business in technology, and that's where the value is. You know, everybody will make you think it's the, you know, these bits, this AI, this language, whatever you can do. It's like, look at the industry right now. It's there are so many jobs in tech open right now. <laughs> they they can't fill the jobs because there aren't enough people, and businesses suffer businesses can't move on to um you know things that they need to move their business further along because you've got people in the middle here kind of controlling the gates a little bit and you know they think that's a cool thing to do but you're you're basically hand you're, you're just handcuffing that that business or that department because you're preventing them from bringing value in to help them generate value. So it's, you're, you, I'm glad you, you mentioned that. It's like, you have to go in and understand that, that you are the value in this whole proposition between the employer and, and, and the employee. Um, you've got the skills that they're looking for. Um, maybe you don't have 20 years worth of, of experience, but you've got ability to grow, so. Uh, anything else? All right, I'll move on to the next slide. Um, what to expect? I didn't necessarily know what to write here, um, but, you know, I can, I can generally say you're, you're probably gonna get between two and four interviews from first interview to an offer um, at an organization. Half of those are generally gonna be uh, tech interviews. Um, some of that will be, um, you know, maybe communicating that uh, verbally. Uh, there's gonna be times when you're gonna, you know, go up to the whiteboard. Uh, one of my favorites is uh, you get like a take home challenge project. They may give you a week or two weeks to build the solution to a problem that they give you. Um, the thing with the, the basically the in-person part of the interview, again, it gets, it gets back to what we were saying before. It's like, there's so much to know that it's impossible for any person to know everything. Um, so understand that and, um, and then kind of find ways to communicate um, with yourself, meaning communicate your anxiety down to nothingness, which we'll talk about a few techniques as we move a, a little further on, but um, any questions on this? I will also <laughs> drop a hint to everybody. Um, if you remember, we filled out a um, form that asked you a bunch of questions, a bunch of technical questions, whenever you first enter the program. Spoiler alert, those are all questions I've been asked in my tech interviews. <laughs> so when we think about when we couldn't answer it in the beginning of the program, maybe just saying, go revisit it, 
and then answer those questions, look up the answers, ask other people in the cohort, ask one of us, ask your mentor how to answer that question, and then bring those answers to us and we can take a look, see and say, hey, you're getting it. Um, but again, those are all real questions and I consistently was asked them. It's about APIs. It is about what are your HTTP protocols? How does the internet work basically? Um, you need to know your error codes. So if you do run into an error 500 or an, uh, if you are getting a 404 or say you get a, yep, everybody knows the 404. Um, personally, if you are really in the know, you'll know a 418. Um, <laughs> which is a real weird one, but um, yeah. So take a look at those and then uh, try to answer them because I guarantee you that's half the battle. <laughs> yeah, and, and what Shani brought up, those are like, that's, that's gonna be your basic knowledge of, of, of what, like you, you'll get to a point where you're just gonna always know that information. And it's, it's not going to matter if you're doing Python, if you're doing JavaScript, or if you're using one of these uh, million JavaScript frameworks, whether you're using C Sharp, whatever. Those are just kind of foundational things that you need um, to understand. And um, experience in, 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 in building a project will... Um, We'll, we'll kind of get you that kind of base knowledge there too. Anything else? Well, I, I will. I will also say you might expect some unruliness with uh, some of your interviewers. So, um, again, uh, some people they're not prepared to interview to interview you. Um, I. I mean, I'm, I've been guilty of this. It's like, I've, there were times when I'd come into work and I literally got off the elevator. I got a cup of coffee in my hand. I got my backpack on and somebody's like, Blair, you got an interview in five minutes. I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? So there's a little bit of that. So I, I will always say, I always expect that, like when I go into an interview. And, um, but my thing is, you want, you want to find a way to kind of humanize that person and have them humanize you in that, if they're in that kind of a situation. And I guarantee you, it'll change that whole interview all the way around, so. Thank you for adding that humanizing part. I was just gonna say, so what do you do when you run into that situation? You can see that you're obviously as the interviewee way more prepared than the interviewer. Like what, what humility, when do you grab humility without kind of like just blowing it and being like, well, you know, it's cool to be unprepared, <laughs> you know? Well, the, the thing is, it's like, again, you have to understand the situation they're in because I'm not exaggerating when I say a lot of these people aren't prepared to interview you. I mean, it's a rush thing because they're working too, you know what I mean? So you go in and, you know, I'm just, I just try to be real with people say, hey, you know, um, let me let you get settled and, you know, I'm ready to go whenever you're ready. Um, you know, or you might say, hey, maybe you come out of a meeting or, you know, uh, take take whatever time you need. I've got I've got the extra time if you need it. So it's just to just to be real about it. You know what I mean? Um, at the end of the day, we're talking to people, and these people they've got families. They they're under pressure from their jobs, and um, someone didn't respect their time enough to say, "Hey, we want you to go interview this person," which you know, I know most people who are actually in the work, they respect the interview process. They really do. They respect it enough. They want to be prepared. They don't want you to have a bad experience most times. I mean, there are some people who, you know, they're just going to be whatever. They're just going to, if they're an ass, they're going to be an ass. You know what I mean? And again, 
at that point, when you realize that they're an ass, you ask your questions, you answer their questions, and you practice on yourself and how you're going to deal with this onslaught that might be coming towards you. If it's just some negative shit, man, grab your shit and leave. It's, it's not worth your time. So let me excuse my language. I'm sorry. I'm an old man. So <laughs> it gets real in these rooms sometimes. It's okay. Okay, uh, cool. Um, okay. I'm, I don't want to keep bugging you, but I'm you're not bugging, bugging you. Sorry. I didn't even mean to say that. Why did I follow that? Yeah. This anyway. is your time. It's your time. So right on my time. Um, so like, uh, you just brought up, you just, the last thing you said brought up a really good point. Um, oh, uh, not that I want to say like, when do you boss up in the interview? But as far as like, um, being able to kind of assert yourself also as an interviewer, because you're all at the same time, you're being tested and quizzed. Like you want to show up and be present and um, kind of ask the right things in this small time frame of usually like what an hour or two of interviewing, like what, I guess, what are some really good opening points to strategize kind of the, the other part of the interview when you start asking questions um, that aren't necessarily tech related um, in that process? The, the thing that has worked for me is to be engaged in the conversation that you're having with the person um, and, and mean it. It's like, you know, I'm a, I'm a people person. I'm a quiet person. I, I'm really private. Um, I do not want to be standing on the stage in front of 10,000 people. I've done it 20 times, 100 times, but it's not, it's not something I want to do. Um, but within that, it's like engage, you know, someone could be, you know, they could say, oh, you know, uh, I'm sorry, I'm late. I mean, I had an interview, a guy was 30 minutes late for the interview and I just sat there. I was like, yeah, I'm just, and, and this is just who I am as a person. I'm like, yeah, let me see how long it takes for somebody to remember I'm in here. I'm going to have them bring me coffee, water every five minutes. And then the person came in and the person said, oh my God, we had such and such happen. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then you, you talk about that a little bit, you know what I mean? You, you engage in whatever conversation that you're having with that person. And the thing is, that doesn't mean you're going to get the job. It doesn't mean you're going to have a good or bad interview. You're, you're, you're respecting that person as a person. And believe it or not, people will remember that. And, you know, this, this is Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh small. So it's like, people are gonna remember um, those types of, you know, positive interactions that you have with them um, in an interview, so to speak. And, and, and then when you get into the technical aspect of it, most interviewers, they want you to kind of collaborate on, on, on finding a solution. They'll give you something, but ask questions, you know, communicate with them uh, that you're interested in, in the process and that you're interested in having the job. And, um, you know, they might be quiet, but you gotta pull them in. You gotta basically pull them into your conversation uh, sometimes. So I hope that makes sense, so. Yeah, thank you. Anything else before I jump? You mentioned walking into a room, walking into a space and almost immediately knowing if you are welcomed or if they want you there. Is there anything that has been, in your experience, that has been said to you or that we should be mindful of during an interview? Something that's said or to, that indicates that maybe we're really not, we really won't be respected or welcome into the space. 
So this is a great question. So, <laughs> so the interviewer is never going to say anything like straight up disrespectful because at that point they've put the company in a litigious uh, position, but they've also put themselves in a position to lose their job. So they're never going to do that, but they're going to give you some nonverbal clues. Um, I'll give you an instance. Uh, uh, probably about two years ago, I, I interviewed at a company in town. I didn't want to interview there because I never really, I just never wanted to work there, but I, I did it as a favor to a friend. And I got into the interview. I went through the first two or three interviews. It was a whole day. And then I got to the hiring manager. And when I walked in the room, and it's like, you know, we're, gonna, we're just going to be real. Uh, well, I walked in the room, and the guy saw my black face. And he literally was like, and I say, well, you know, in my mind, I'm like, okay, whatever. So we go through the process of interview, interviewing and, um, and, and you know, there, there are people who have egos and, and, and that kind of stuff. So, I, you know, I'm a quiet guy. I'm not a pushover. I'm not going to, I'm just not going to take, I'm not going to take shit. You know what I mean? So I'm in a, in a process, I'm doing this as a favor to a friend. So I'm not going to blow up that relationship. So I'm going to go through this, but I've got an interviewer who's, who's trying to badger me with information and knowledge. So that's going to happen at, at times when you get those types of people, they're going to try to make you feel like you don't know what they know. And the thing is, I've got enough experience, I've got enough knowledge, and you know, I'm just gonna say, all right, let's go. But if, if you don't feel comfortable doing that, and you know, you're more than welcome to, to get up and leave. It's it's your time, you know what I mean? And, and and don't ever feel bad about that. If it's not for you, just say, you know what, maybe this isn't the place for me you know, and then say, hey, I appreciate your time. Uh, I'm just going to end this interview right now. Grab your stuff and leave. Trust me, walking out of an interview says a bigger thing to them about who you are. I've seen people or I know people who have done that. And they ended up getting the job just because they're like, I'm not going to deal with that for you. Um, so people are going to give you um, clues. You know what I mean? You, you may have a solution that you're writing on the board and you know it's right. They're going to say, oh, that's not right. And sometimes people do that stuff in interviews because they're going to, sometimes they want to challenge you to think of another option or another way to solve the problem. They're not going to be badgering when they, when they, when they do that. They're going to Co kind of collaborate with you and talk with you and try to pull you along to think of a different solution. In other situations, they're not really listening to anything you say. And at that point, it's about, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna let you spit on me publicly. I'm not gonna let you spit on me, period. So that, that comes with, you just have to have your own self-worth about that. You know what I mean? That's not something I can teach you. I just know I don't have the Blair is the type to be bullied bone in my body. So, you know. So, so if you do that, if you decide, okay, they're pissing on me in this interview, how do you, how, how do you walk away? How do you respectfully walk away? You, there, it's, you, here's, here's the thing, you talk about respectfully. So respect goes both ways. It's like what I just said, you can literally interrupt a person and say, hey, you know, I don't think this is gonna be the, the best place for me to work. Um, I'm just gonna end this interview right now. I do thank you for your time. I, I appreciate everything. And then 
you can extend your hand. If they want to shake your hand, fine. If not, cool, grab your stuff and go. There's nothing wrong with that. And, um, you know, uh, you have to figure that out within yourself, how you want to do that. Um, I would never say start yelling and cussing and doing all that kind of stuff. You know, that's, you know, that's going to reflect on you negatively. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, you're still the value. You're the money. You know, um, you know, don't don't decrease your value by by, you know, cussing this person out or, you know, throwing a drink in their face or whatever it is. But you don't have to deal with disrespect. Uh, I always tell people. This is your career. It's not some employer's career. It's yours. You just work for them. You have the value. You can take your value, your money to any of the millions of companies in the United States that's looking, and really the world, that's looking for somebody to help them, you know, build out whatever product that they have. And you have to, you have to not be afraid of your own value. And granted, you build up your value by, you know, getting better at your craft. You know what I'm saying? It's like having the ability like for me, it's like I can, I'm turning jobs down right now. You know what I mean? I people are calling me from different states. I'm not even to interview. Hey Blair, do you think you'd be interested in, in coming to help my team out for two years? But that's just me building up my skill set to that point. So you got to put the time in. When you put the time in, that's going to actually give you a lot of your confidence. Um, in the NBA, like I'm a, I'm a huge uh, basketball fan. You hear these players say, oh, like Steph Curry, it's like yeah, this guy is shooting from half court in, in basketball games. And you know, they're like, man, did your coach get mad? And he's like, no, I, I do this in practice every day. He sees me take these. He sees me make these. I put the work in. So I'm confident that I can make this shot in a game. And he knows that I can make the shot in the game. He put the work in. So you gotta, you gotta put the work into your craft. So that'll give you even more walk out ability because you know you're valuable, not just in this city, but dude, there's tons of cities across this country that are looking for people like bad right now. So thank you. All right, so I always say how to prepare. So um, I would, starting a job is one of the, the most stress, a new job is one of the most stressful things that a person uh, can do. And with that being said, I always say you have to find an emotional, mental balance um, in, in, in an interview. And, uh, you know, I've got here that's easier said than done, but it's definitely possible. And um, here's a couple of things that I've done or I've, or I've helped people do um, that seem to help. Um, and we can talk about a few other things too, if, if you guys think it'll help. Um, number one, your experience is good enough, right? This mental battle is 90% of the interview. So you got to go in and say, your current experience is good enough. If it wasn't, you wouldn't be in the interview. So they brought you in to, to be interviewed for a reason. So you're not, you, you may not know everything, but you're in the door. And as long as you're in the door, that's an opportunity for you to say, look, um, I may not know everything, but I've got, I've got the hustle within me to figure it out. And, and really at the end of the day, that's all this is. It's, it, you're hustling, you know, at the end of the day, every day you're just, you're, you're just taking more knowledge, putting it on more knowledge, putting it on more knowledge. The more you see, the more you experience in this industry, you know, you're going to get better. But 
you got to start someplace and you have to be confident where you started because there are, for you guys are in this program, I, there's probably 200 people in town who might have wanted to do this, this program, but they were afraid to do it. So, you, you know, you're, you're one of the few who decided to, to basically take a step, you know, walk out the door, you know, play the game, you know what I mean? So you have to understand that where you're at right now is good enough. And it, it's like getting in the, in the league, in the NBA, you might have the skills to get in there, but you got to stay in there. So as long as you're getting interviews and you're able to get in an interview, you're good. So now you just have to continually do the, the work to stay in interviews and to get positions and then to stay in the industry. So just don't let anybody say, you know, you're, you're, you've done a boot camp or you're, you just graduated college or you, you know this programming language and not that one. And you just say, listen, I'm up in here. Why you got me in here then? You know what I'm saying? Because at, at the end of the day, what they read on your resume is good enough for them to take up their time, which costs money, and your time to come and meet to figure out if we can do something together. So uh, the next thing is you can always practice interviewing with friends with mock interviews. That's, that's cool. I would say if you're gonna do that, make it somebody who's in the industry, but make it somebody who's got more experience in the industry than you. <clears throat> and um, I know everybody has nerves about interviewing. Um, I, used to, I used to have the same thing. Now I don't care, you know, this is who I am, you like me or not. Um, but I got around that by literally standing in front of a mirror <laughs> and, and mocking out an interview with myself, and, but watching myself, not looking down at my notes, looking right at my face. It sounds really strange, but that helped me to kind of suppress my nerves in an interview. And, you know, I, I've got an 18 year old daughter. She has problems standing up in front of the class and doing all of that kind of stuff. She did the same thing with the mirror, she can do it. She doesn't like doing it, but she can get through it. So um, those are, that's a really big thing for me that I like to impart to people. If you can do that, look at yourself, ask yourself a question, answer it while looking at yourself and not laughing, not stumbling, but just getting right through it. Um, then you can get through an interview. Um, I'll also say, uh, this may sound strange too, but like some breathing exercises as well. It's like, you know, you know, people suffer from anxiety and, and, and sometimes you, you, you've got to calm yourself um, by just taking in some, some, some deep breaths, uh, just finding ways to calm yourself down. It might be, I twirl a pin in an interview. That helps me to calm my nerves. You might have something else. Um, maybe you, you, you chew gum. Maybe you have a can of Altoids that sit next to you. Maybe you've got a bottle of water or a cup of coffee. So find something that you can do to kind of take your mind off your nerves, but also take that nervous energy and push it somewhere else. Like I said, I, I literally spin a pen in an interview all the time. Um, and the other thing is, like I said before, use, use, use your interview as practice for interviewing. You know, you may get the job, you may not, you know, it's, you know, I, I, I've moved here from Arizona and I, um, I had a company there and I, we had work uh, through my company, we were doing all kinds of stuff, but I consistently went on two to three interviews a week for about a whole year, not taking offers, but the whole thing was, it's like, I, I wanna get in practice of, of doing this stuff. I wanna make sure my game's always up. The other, the other thing is you're, you can learn so much from an interview. You can learn um, 
new things for you to study in your career. Like maybe you've worked at XYZ company for, I don't know, five years. And the only thing you know is what this company does. You can take an interview to figure out or to learn that, you know, maybe Rails or Golang or some other language is like, oh, that's the new upcoming language. Um, because you've heard about it in this interview. You're not trying to get the job, but you're getting some information from that interview. And then you can go back home, build a project on your own to learn that language, to learn some uh, little intricate parts of it. And then when you're ready to go interview for something like that, you know, you've given yourself the skills, but the interview actually let you know that this is what you should be learning next. Um, the other thing, don't be intimidated in, in an interview. Um, you know, look at the interview as just a conversation between people. And I know that that's easier said than done, but, you know, I look at it this way. If someone just pushed up on you in, in the giant eagle, like, you know, you took my cart, said, no, this, are you going to just be intimidated by that? Say, you know, you're either going to go get another cart let them have it, or are you gonna be like, no, this is my card. Why don't you go out there and get one for yourself? It's the same kind of dynamic. Um, don't be intimidated uh, in the interview. It's, again, it's your career. They don't own your career. They don't define your career. They don't do anything for your career. You do it. You're the one who gets up, you go to work and you do the work to learn the job, to get better at your craft and you come home and you're reading books, you're writing code, you're doing all of that stuff. It's your career, it's your life. And companies will never tell you that, but you, you, have, to, you have to go into that whole uh, process knowing that this is about me, this is about my career, this is about me, not only doing something that I want to do or love to do, but also you know, taking care of my family, making sure I got a roof over my head. And, you know, don't be intimidated. It's your career. They, they don't define you. They're not, they don't own you. Let me put it to you that way. And again, if it doesn't feel good, you can get up and leave the interview. And um, I have a little blurb here about imposter syndrome. It's not your friend. And I say, kick that shit to the curb. It's like, at, at the end of the day, it's like, if you're not gonna let an interviewer intimidate you, don't let, don't intimidate yourself, basically. Um, you've gone through this, 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 this program. Um, you're doing this work, you're learning this work. It's like, it, it gets back to, I, I have the value. You know, I may not have, you know, 10 years of experience. I may not have whatever, but I'm, I'm in the game. I'm in the race. And at the end of the day, you keep practicing and, and getting better. It's like that imposter syndrome, it, it'll go away. You know what I mean? So um, it, it, it's, it's just about experience and seeing, seeing a lot. And um, so it, it's just a mental game. It's just say, hey, I'm a bad motherfucker, excuse my language. So, um, um, but, but you have to remember that it's, it's your career. Um, you're valuing yourself at, at all parts of this, this, this interview and even um, training yourself for this career. So any questions or concerns at, at that point? Am I boring you guys? <laughs> No, this is not boring okay. by any means. Um, the imposter syndrome not being your friend. The funny thing about it is that you don't realize when it shows up um, a lot of times. And I'll speak for myself. Uh, there's some instances where it's not even the interview time. It'll be like the just the the uh, application process, right? 
Mm-hmm. You got to send out maybe like 20 different responses, 20 different cover letters just to get one interview, let's say. Um, and in that, you know, out of that 20, you get that one and you essentially, you are still thinking about the 19 letters <laughs> um, that rejected you and then wondering if this one is like the bottom of the barrel um, in some kind of weird way. Uh, like, oh, so the, you know, this is the comp- this is the only company that I'm good enough for type thing. But again, you don't even realize that you're doing it. You might be aiming for something awesome or something that seemed like a shoe in, uh, you know, like easy, this should have been my job. And then it doesn't. And then the other three don't. And then the other five don't. And then you have this one. And so not trying to be thirsty, you know, it's just like, uh, how do you just not jump right into that because of the, you're avoiding the imposter syndrome somehow you're trying to avoid it. But then again, somehow it's just right there. I'll tell you what I told my niece. I have a niece who graduated uh, college two years ago in computer science um, from UC Davis in California. She got to Ohio and I bet you she sent out 75 to 100 resumes and she got nothing. And she was going to go take a coding boot camp. And I was like, man, girl, why are you wasting your money? You just spent 50 grand a year on the computer science degree. You're good. And I explained to her, I was like, looking for jobs, it's, it's, it's a little bit different than what they tell you. Um, there are so many open job wrecks at companies and there's so many applications that come in for these jobs. They're, the people aren't even, they can't look at it. So they generally funnel that stuff to consulting companies. So if you're sending something directly to a company, um, nine times out of 10, you're not going to get that job um, because they're not looking for that kind of stuff. They have these job uh, systems where you, you put your resume in or you fill out your online resume. That whole system is there for once you get a job, then you can go through that system and actually do the, the legal application that they have to take um, where you enter in you know, your real address and your social security number, all that jazz. That's what that system is for. It's the consulting companies, the contracting or the, the, the placement companies. They're placing for most of the jobs in the United States because the companies aren't prepared to deal with that kind of volume of, of requests for work. So you can't, you know, I'm not trying to deny uh, your, if, if anyone goes through this, I'm not trying to deny this, but I explained this to my, to my niece and her whole application process changed immediately and she sent out three resumes to consulting companies or or you know uh, you know i i don't know what you call it. i don't want to call it like a job placement or whatever but she got three interviews immediately and she got two job offers out of that and she went through the whole thing of thinking she wasn't good enough or that she was kind of faking the funk through through this industry so to speak but it had nothing to do with her it's just how it's just how the industry and and even finding jobs and technology is just set up really weird but they don't explain that to you they don't explain that to you in in boot camps they don't explain that to you in college they may have company reps come out to these universities and universities, I'm not universities, but companies will send people out there just so that students know, hey, we're a company that you might wanna work for. And they may take a card, they may give you a card or something along those lines, or they may say, hey, send your resume here. 
nine times out of 10, that stuff's getting funneled somewhere else to some consulting company or contracting company or whatever it is. Or if you're applying for a job like on uh, Indeed or LinkedIn, that's going to some, you're not going to the company directly nine times out of 10. You shouldn't be. If you are, you're, you're not, you're, you're not going to find a job that way. I'll, I'll be the first. To it's really hard. It's really hard. So, um, so don't look at the lack of contact as some negative anything towards you. You're just applying in, in an outdated channel. So the, the, they don't tell you this stuff. I mean, you know, some of, some of the other, uh, other people on this call, I, I, I know some of you know this, but um, you, you just have to continually figure out how people are finding talent. You'll get to the point where you'll know people in the industry. Say you go work for a company, um, you know, you become really cool with your manager and then you end up taking a job somewhere else. You still got this relationship with this person that was your manager before. You can ask them questions. You don't work for them anymore. You can ask them different types of questions now. So they'll give you the skinny on how to do this stuff. You know what I mean? So, um, so you, you, that's why I say you gotta always value yourself in your career because uh, as long as you're putting the work in, you're, tr you're working to continue to get better, um, you know, you're winning. Um, there's no anything stagnant in this industry. So as long as you're continuing to work, you're working on projects at home on your own. Maybe you wanna build your own website. Maybe you wanna, I don't know, maybe you wanna build uh, your own version of a social network. Maybe you wanna push it out there. And, and as a business, maybe you don't, maybe you're just trying to learn. You, you have to do that stuff, but that stuff is gonna be the thing, the things that um, make you feel more confident about your abilities. So. Any, anything else? Confidence is key in this. And you only get, you gain confidence by, you know, continually putting in the work. You know, Malcolm Gladwell says you become an expert by basically doing something for 10,000 hours. You get your 10,000 hours in, in, in writing software, you can go in and communicate. You'll know when somebody's BSing you in an interview. So, um, so that's why I say 90% of the whole interview process, it's mental and they know it as well. So, um, but, if, but you knowing that should give you the upper hand and how to deal with it. It's like, it's like you're going into a test and you know they're gonna be trying this, these tactics. It's like you counter it. Get your, uh, your was it Neo from the Matrix on when he's dodging the bullets? Do your thing, man, and, and keep it moving. So, and then uh, the tech prep. So, there's a few items here that they they always ask. I will tell you right now if you have a a favorite programming language know data structures really well. And, and what I mean by that is know why you might use a hash table versus an array or whatever it is. <clears throat> understand arrays, understand strings, linked lists, stacks and queues, hash tables and sorting. Um, it doesn't matter if you're doing front end, doesn't matter if you're doing back end stuff. Um, if you can communicate this stuff right here, and if you can also write this stuff, you're, you're, you're good 99% of the time. A lot of people get tripped up over these things. And um, there are a couple of books I, I, I put at the end of this deck that you can actually kind of bone up on this kind of stuff as well um, before an interview. Like you, you should be, so I'm in, I'm in my dining room, I'm not in my office. I got a bunch of stuff on my desk in my office, but I've got 
two bookshelves, like two full bookshelves in my office. They're filled with textbooks, different programming languages. I got an old, uh, I bought this, I got this book from a library in like Iowa. <laughs> and it's uh, algor the algorithm design man. And I know it may sound real nerdy or whatever it is, but it's like, there was some stuff that I wanted to figure out. And this was the only book that I found that could get me what I needed. And it's like, I ended up reading this book. And it's like, some of the stuff I didn't understand, but, but I kept reading it and figuring it out. Maybe it takes me, you know, a month, two months to read it instead of two weeks, because I'm reading it over and over again. You know what I mean? So um, you can get books that will explain the stuff to you in a, in a, in a fashion where, where you can understand it. I mean, some of these books are written in a way so that you, you, they're selling books. They're not really selling the knowledge, if that makes sense. So some of the stuff is written in a way so that you or nobody else can even understand what they're trying to communicate. So you just have to, you gotta, you gotta pick books wisely, so to speak, you know, um, or publishers who always uh, push out pretty good uh, content that way but these things here if you can communicate these things well and and code these things well and and just understand the concepts of them and why they're needed and how you might use them so um you're 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 in uh and you're always going to get questions about these especially these data structures especially sorting and hash tables Hey Blair. Yes. Um, I have, there's a question in the uh, chat. Um, uh, are you able to send me the slide deck so I can share with the, uh, yeah. everyone yeah. here? Okay. Yeah. And then the other question was, do you have any publishers that you tend to favor? Yeah, I, um, I'm a big fan of the uh, pragmatic programmers. They've got books on how to be pragmatic about development, how to unit test, how to, you know, learn this programming language. Um, they've got a ton of books. They've been around really since I started in the industry um, in the uh, 90s, mid 90s. <laughs> so um, yeah, they, they're always good. And, you know, again, people learn in different ways. So they may not be good for you. So you, you, I mean, we got this coronavirus stuff going on. So I don't even know if bookstores are even open now, but um, I would go in and just peruse books, you know what I mean? And uh, read and see if it was good. If not, you know, I wouldn't buy it. So um, anything else before I jump to the, the next slide? All right, tips. Uh, I'm a big fan of Biggie Smalls, the Notorious B.I.G. So if you don't know, now you know. Well, in technology, if you don't know, say you don't know. <laughs> don't, don't, you're gonna have, you're gonna get more respect um, in an interview process if you say, you know what, I'm not familiar with that versus uh, BSing your way around something. Um, I know I can't speak for a lot of interviewers, but I know when I'm interviewing a person, I don't want to hear that. Um, I, want, I want, just say you don't know. And then maybe we can have a conversation about what it is. And because you might know, you might know it as another term, you know what I mean? So, um, just be forthright and say, you know, I'm, I'm not familiar with that. Um, and, and then move on. Uh, don't be afraid. You can be nervous, but don't be afraid. There's nothing to fear, you know. Um, you can get up and leave. Uh, it's, it's not gonna end the world for you. You know what I mean? Um, it's, at the end of the day, an interview is a conversation between people. 
and you've had a million conversations with people you like, a million conversations with people you love, you've had a million conversations with people you just can't stand, right? Same deal. That's all it is. Just that has always gotten me through here at, 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 up here. So it's like, I'm just talking to somebody about technology. Either we understand each other or we don't. And if I can get you to understand my code speak or I understand your code speak, then we're in a good situation. If not, then, you know, I'm, I'm sure at some point in everybody's uh, life, they've had a significant other that, you know, you were just oil and water and you're like, yeah, this ain't gonna work out. That's literally all this is. It's either going to work out or it's not. And you just, you know, be, uh, be positive enough in yourself and value yourself enough to say, I'm not cool with this or I am nervous, but I really want this. So, and um, when you're answering questions, um, Take your time, don't be rushed. Don't let the interviewer rush you, you know, take your time. Um, I always, I told you I always have a spinning pen, right? I'm spinning a pen, but I've also got a little book there. So whenever I'm asked a question, I actually will write down their question before I even attempt to answer. And it's, something that lets the interviewer know that I'm really thinking about what they're doing, what they're asking me. I'm also thinking about how I'm going to answer this question, but I'm also doing something else. I'm preparing myself for my next interview. So they're asking these questions. I'm, I'm, I'm note taking these questions. If I know the answer to it, then I'll go answer it. If I don't, I'll say I don't know it, but at least I've got the question there so that I can go figure out the answer at some other point, or maybe implement the answer at some other time. And um, again, in my next note is to be your most confident, swaggalicious self, but be professional. So you can't be you 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 can't be that without um, number one putting the work in, but then also taking those questions that they ask you, writing them down that's gonna help give you more confidence for your next interview. Um, you're getting as much information as you can from your interview. That's like, you're learning from this. It, it, technology is all about continuous improvement. That's all it is. You know, what we did in the 90s, we don't do, we don't do in, 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 these, in these times, we've improved. Um, so it's the same thing, it's like, you may not know of some concept. You may have never even heard of it, but you you hear it in this interview. So you're like, hey, you know, I've never heard of that. I just, let me write this down. And then you leave that interview, man, you go figure it out. Because the next interview you have, if that comes up again, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, this is this. I implemented this in this project and I'll go write XYZ on the board for you, yada, yada, yada. Um, also, if you're going to code, use your best language. Um, if C sharp is your best language or Python is your best language, and this role is for a rust position and they give you a take home project, write it in your best language. <clears throat> Trust me, they're not going to care. They're going to be looking at how you solve this problem there's gonna be somebody there who understands that language or they can figure it out. Um, and the other thing is when your code solutions don't have to work, whether you're doing stuff on the, on the whiteboard, whether you're doing the project, 9.9 um, .9 times out of 10, they're not designed either for you to complete or to work. They're trying to figure out how you solve a problem. What steps you start from? What did you implement? What did they're because they're going to look at what they liked about your implementation, and um, it may never work. They may hate your database queries, but you know maybe your 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 
maybe you've implemented a, a repository pattern in a way that they've never seen before and it just kind of blew their mind. It's like, you know, nothing has to work. They just need to see that you can think, you know what I'm saying? That's all it is. Um, and also in the interviews, you know, don't write code or answer right away. I, I have write down the questions you've been asked and then answer, um, you know, take the time. It's like, if you got 30 minutes for an interview or an hour for an interview, um, I'm one of those people, I'm like, man, you know, I'm just gonna sit up and hear for this whole two hours. Um, you know, can I get another cup of coffee? <laughs> and I know it sounds real strange, but it's like, it's my time. I wanna go at my pace and I wanna communicate what I need to communicate to you. You're not gonna rush me up out of here. So like, if there's an emergency, you gave me two hours, I'm taking the two hours. That's just me. You do whatever, you handle it however you want, but it's always a wise thing to um, not be rushed in your interview at all. Um, also, there are gonna be times when an interviewer, they're gonna give you a problem, they may write it on the board, and then you're to go up there to the board and help solve something with them. Sometimes the interviewer might slowly give you guidance. Don't fight against that guidance. Um, they're giving, excuse me, they're giving you guidance for a reason. They're trying to determine how well you collaborate with others. So work with it, you know what I mean? Figure out the best way to communicate to get to something on the board. Um, that test isn't about your, always about your answer, but it's always about how you communicate with that person. And um, my next thing is uh, silence is dangerous territory. Don't let it get quiet. Don't let it get quiet. You've got interviewers who have imposter syndrome. You have interviewers who are introverts. Um, so the thing is, it's like, you wanna keep some conversation going. You might ask them, well, what are you guys working on right now? If, if, if you're able to, to answer that question. You know, the thing is you wanna keep some dialogue going and then you get through the interview. And uh, also in your coding solutions, do not sacrifice code cleanliness to get to a solution. Um, make it as readable as you can. Don't skimp on the unit test if you, you know, make it a quality implementation. It doesn't have to work, it doesn't have to be complete, but what you do have, you want it to be in a, in a state that they can easily read it. They can easily determine what you're trying to do. Any, any questions, any concerns or comments? You good? <laughs> okay. And, and then I've got uh, some resources here. So um, there's um, the daily coding problem. You can literally uh, put your email address in there. And they'll send you a problem every day to solve. Um, I mean, just real quick things, you know what I mean? Um, I, I, I love stuff like this for, for people uh, to, to prep for interviews because it helps you to gain some confidence. It's also gonna help you, um, you know, basically see something or code something that maybe you haven't done before. Uh, it's the same with leak code and hacker rank. They're very similar. They give you uh, different, you know, small problems that you can, um, um, you know, solve uh, pretty quickly. Um, and then here's the book that I tell everybody who's prepping for tech interviews, especially their first interviews. It's on this deck. It's called Cracking the Coding Interview. And it's... 180, 189 programming questions and the solutions. And they might be in another programming language, but this book, it will allow you, oh my goodness, my phone's are sorry. Um, it will allow you to actually understand the problem 
see a solution, but then you can also implement that solution in your, your, your dominant language, so to speak. Um, and then this next book, um, I highly recommend this book, A Common Sense Guide to Data Structures and Algorithms. Because as you get further into the interview process, I mean, you, you're gonna be asked, you know, data structures and different algorithms or different patterns, that kind of stuff. Um, so uh, there's a wealth of knowledge in those two books right there. So, um, and I mean, that, that's pretty much my deck, um, but, you know, again, you ask me anything, um, you, uh, you know, I, I, I want to uh, answer as much as I can in this time that we have or you know, try to help in any way that I can while we're here. So it could be anything. Um, can you share with uh, some of our cohort members, maybe any questions, you know, at the end of the interview, they always say, what, what questions do you have for me? And you should never not have any questions. So can you share uh, with us, like, what are some questions that people have asked that you've been really impressed by or that um, have made you remember the people who are inter interviewing with you? Uh, I had someone ask me, the project that you're working on, I don't know anything about it, but what is the thing that you hate most about it? Or what would you change? What's the, the thing, the one thing you would change in your current project? You know, what's, what's, what's keeping you up at night? Or what in your process at work um, would you like to fix? You know what I mean? So um, th those types of questions where you, I always say questions like that are great because you're, you're, you're interviewing this company as well. And nobody wants to go to a company that is just, it's just a straight up train wreck because there are a lot of, there are a lot of tech departments that are train wrecks. And it's like, it, it can be the most stressful draining thing in the world. So I would always ask questions um, of the interviewer um, along those lines. What are, what are some of your pain points uh, in your job? Um, well, what do you see uh, your department going in the next you know, three to five years uh, technology-wise? Are you guys gonna stay, are you gonna stay with this language or framework or are you looking at uh, you know, you know, moving to the cloud or using this language or using containers or whatever it is? Basically, ask them about their experience in that department from a technology perspective, from a business perspective. Um, you know, you, you know, do you like it here? That, that's actually one of my, my favorite questions. Um, do you really like working where you work? What are some of the challenges of working here that, that you see or from your perspective? Um, they don't always have to be technology questions. It's like, you want to get some insight from this person because you want to know what it's really like to work in here. Um, you know, I, I worked at a place where, you know, I interviewed a person, uh, there were like three or four of us interviewing a person and we didn't have coffee and this, you know, they didn't have, you know, the real cool coffee and all this other stuff where we worked. I mean, we always just got up out of our, our seats and walk to the, the coffee shop around the corner. This person was really tied to having those types of things in the office, which is fine. They asked about it and I was like, yeah, we don't, we, they're not gonna spend money for coffee for us. They're not gonna, we're not gonna have granola bars or any of that kind of stuff here. They're just not gonna do it. And that person, we were going to hire him but he dropped out of the interview process because of that, because it meant something to him. And, and, there, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's like, so you have to ask about everything. You can ask about anything. It's your time in that interview. That's why I say, if they give you two hours, 
take two hours, ask them anything under the sun. You know, the bathroom might be five floors down and there's no elevator and you got to walk down five flights of stairs to go to the bathroom and then walk five, five flights up. So you, you wouldn't think that that's such a big thing, but it is, you know what I mean? So um, anything, it's about your comfort in that workspace. So you could ask them, are there any, have you experienced any difficult people on your team or on this floor or whatever it is? You can ask them anything. And they can either answer or they can decline to answer, but you've asked the question. You've, you've at least made an attempt to communicate with this person. Come on, man, y'all gotta have more questions. Do you have any questions about um, how to prep for your mock interviews uh, coming up? Does anybody have questions about that? Or what you should expect, or maybe the format of the interviews? I have a question, but it's not about um, the mock interviews. With um, like interviewing for the tech companies, since they said that we can put the projects that we do on Treehouse on our resume, but do you suggest something else to like differentiate us from other people? Because I feel like everyone has like the same projects on their portfolios. Like, you have any? Yeah, well, you know, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur at heart. Uh, anybody who truly knows me knows that I'm about getting that guap with something that I've created. Excuse my French. Y'all know what I'm saying. Y'all know what I'm saying. So I, a long time ago, it's like I wanted to get better at my craft. So I tell people all the time, figure out some idea of something that you think would be cool. Build it. Put it online. You can either put it out on GitHub if you want to do that, or you can make a product out of it and put it out there. That's, that's gonna be your true resume. If you've got stuff out there that people can see that, you know, you know Python, you know what I mean? You've done some pretty cool stuff with Python. You've deployed APIs out on, uh, you know, DigitalOcean, Heroku or whatever it is. Um, that, that's actually what got my niece the job. She and I had been working um, with some stuff on just on her own. And she built this uh, sort of like a, a light job thing. And she built these APIs, she got them hosted, she built a front end, got them hosted, they were connected right into a database. That's what got her, that's what got her her job. She got the interview and she communicated this stuff, sent them the websites and all that stuff. Then they gave her a a take home project and she did the same thing. She was able to host it. That, that got her the job that made her stand out from anybody else because she took the initiative on her own to learn something at a, in a deeper level. So I say build a project. Um, it could be anything. It could be a website for <clears throat> a local restaurant. It could be um, something where you know you want you want to make your resume digital you want to put it online but you want to put all the content of your resume in a database you know what i mean so when you get a new job or you get a new experience you can just go to a form and type it in and hit save and and your resume is right there so i would say write something real world um and and either host it um, online so that the world can see it and use it or host it on GitHub for people to actually see your source code. Um, Treehouse is fine, but <clears throat> you get to a point where people, they're gonna wanna see if you can make your, you can write, you can persist data to a database, you can pull it out, you can deploy an API, you can communicate with an API. Um, you know, 
whether it's JavaScript or maybe it's whatever, they want to be able to see that. And if you haven't had that experience in your program, it's like, I don't know what they teach in universities now, but when I was in college, um, I mean, I, I learned C++ uh, on a VAX uh, mainframe. And it's like, I got out of college and the whole world was Windows. And I was just like, I was like, oh my God, I, they didn't teach us this. So, um, but I, I just started building things, you know what I mean? And um, what's cool about that, it helps you stand out, but it also helps you get better at, at your craft. And I will always pick getting a book and doing a real world project over, you know, just, you know, Googling a couple of articles or whatever. It's like, you're gonna learn more by building a real world project, whether it's a mobile app, whatever it is. So, and 99% of the people, they're not gonna do that because most people, they, they can't finish. It's like, you know, they, they're not gonna, you know, manage their time or they're not gonna be willing to put in an hour a day on a project for two months, you know what I'm saying? So. Um, doing something like that with, you know, either a full-time job or family and all that kind of stuff that demonstrates a, a certain kind of commitment to your craft and being good at, at, what, at what you do. And, and, you know, your commitment to wanting to work in this industry and regardless of whether you get the job or not, I guarantee you, your interviewers, not only will they go out to your website and do whatever, if it's something cool, you might get a new paying customer and you might actually get the job. So you just never know. Thank you. Y'all have nothing else. I mean, you can ask me anything. What are we not asking that we should be asking? Um, uh, like real question, real world questions, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, <laughs> like, um, I was I a question. Question. Say that again, <laughs> help us out. Maybe we don't know to ask, them. maybe we haven't had that experience. Oh, uh, I've got a question, actually. I have a question, too. Okay. So as like an entry level candidate and you're thinking about salary and negotiation and trying not to sell yourself short and kind of like finding yourself in a place where you're trying to exercise your worth on top of you know create making yourself look like um a credible investment from an entry level position like what are some things that are like keywords that you would suggest or things to kind of make sure are completely laced up when, you know, you're kind of asking maybe what you would consider above entry-level pre grade? Well, so that gets to understanding the job in the area that you live in. And, um, and then just, you know, snooping, you know what I'm saying? It's like most companies, especially nowadays, they're not trying to give you any salary ranges on anything, but you got to figure out, there's information out there to let you know with what you're doing, what is the pay range in a given place? Um, and then if you're entry level and the range is, I don't know, 60 to $95,000, if, if this is your first gig, hey, uh, me personally, I'm not going to go for 95 if I don't feel like I have the experience. You can ask for it. Um, but once you get enough experience under your belt, I mean, for me, it's like they, they ask me all the time, well, well, what are you looking for in salary? And I, I literally say, well, what's your max? You know what I mean? And I don't have a problem with that. It's like, you know, you know, you know, I moved here to Pittsburgh. It's like salaries dropped almost 50% from where I came from. So it's like, <laughs> so it's like, it's different everywhere you go, but you just have to have, um, 
an idea of what the, the salary is like in the, in, the, in the market that you're in, but then also value yourself as well. So it's like, you know, they're going to lowball you. Uh, you know, companies, they want to pay as little as possible for uh, roles. Um, I mean, and they're paying benefits, they're doing all this kind of stuff. So they want to, you know, manage their own costs. So you, you have an idea of what your worth is, what you are willing to work for, but also know what you're not willing to work for. So, um, and don't settle because believe it or not, they got this range for a reason. If you, if you fall within the range, um, you know, sometimes companies, they don't want you to go directly to the high end because they want you to stay there for a while and they want you to be able to grow into the role. So it's like, you got to take so much into consideration, but have an idea of what your worth is in this specific market. And then just ask for what you want. I mean, the worst they can do is say no, but don't price yourself out of the job and don't, you know, price yourself. Like don't, don't undersell yourself financially because nobody wants to be working an $80,000 a year job for $35,000. So. What was your uh, worst interview and the shit? I wish I hadn't have done that. Florals. Uh, well, this is actually kind of funny. Um, my niece works for American Greetings in the Cleveland area. They used to have a huge office in Chicago and I used to live in Chicago for a few years. And I, I, they wanted me to come out for an interview and it was a long ass way. Like, I mean, it took me 90 minutes to drive from my house out to this interview. And, you know, Chicago's got, they got some, they got some real freeways in Chicago. So I get to this interview and it was like, uh, I interviewed with, with two people and then another person and then another person, another interview with two people. And this guy, asked me to write uh, like a data access thing on the board. And uh, <clears throat> so I write it and I use interfaces and all this other stuff. And I've done this a million times. So it's like, I, I can do this from memory. And the guy goes, that's not right. And I said, well, what do you mean that's not right? He's like, well, and it was a Microsoft technology. It was actually .NET technology when it first came out. He's like, the book, that's not in this book. And I said, well, I don't care what's in the book. I said, in the real world, you can't build this like that because this, you have to use this for this type of database and you have to use this for that type of database. So um, that you can do that that way, but you can't scale, you know, X number of transactions to your database with that. So the guy was adamant about, you know, that's wrong. And then I just said, you know what? I don't want to work here if you don't know the answer to your own question. I literally got my stuff. I said, have a good day. And I walked out and the hiring manager <laughs> saw me walk out and he's like, where are you going? I'm like, I can't work here. He, I don't want to work here. And it, I mean, it sounds arrogant and elitist or whatever it is, but it's like, I already know that it's going to be a problem because I have more knowledge than this person and they're not willing to go beyond a poorly written book. You know what I'm saying? So I left, I didn't need the job, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, you know, and I probably could have been a little nicer to that person, but I'll be honest, I was pissed. I mean, I drove 90 minutes in traffic and for some BS. It's like, come on, man, really? It, it, I felt disrespected. So, and it would have been a continual line of disrespect had I worked there. So I felt bad about how I talked to them, talked to them but I didn't feel bad about leaving. So it's sometimes it's, every job's not for you. 
You know what I mean? And all money ain't good money, so. What was the company that you sold in Arizona? Uh, it was a small company called uh, Blossom, B-L-O-S-M-E. Um, it wasn't some billion dollar thing. It wasn't anything like that. We, we did well. Um, you know, we sold data, location data. <laughs> what are some good projects for beginners to work on and put on their resume? Because I've noticed a common theme is to like um, shoot a bit too far for a beginner and take on a giant project that you don't really know how to make yet and then people get overwhelmed by that. So what would you say would be like a good start? So I'm kind of the wrong person to ask because to me, any project is a good start. And I know you talk about being overwhelmed. Um, that gets you into the process of, of, of writing software where I'm, I'm sure you guys have heard about being agile or agility and all this other stuff. But it's really about breaking your project down into smaller chunks and not, not trying to get it done in two weeks. You know what I mean? The whole thing is it's a learning process. So if you can logically break a project down into like functional areas, well, I got to build my login, right? I got to build my account management. I got to build my payment piece. I mean, that might take a year for, you know, as being a new person. And that's fine, you know what I mean? You're, you're, you're at least putting the work in to do it and to learn. So, um, it, it, and I tell people this all the time and, and I'm sure, Allison, I don't know if you remember, but I worked at Highmark for a little while, but I would go to lunch every day with my own computer and my own laptop and I would work on something an hour a day at my lunch break. And that was my hour a day on a project that, you know, I started then that me and a few other people, we literally just finished in like November, this past November, December. I mean, it's been a couple of years because we only were going to work an hour a day, but we we're also designing a, a big thing. So take the time that you're, you're just going to get better with what you do with the time. And if you don't get something online for people to view, uh, like a full-on project, use GitHub. People can see your code at that point. So it's about time management. That's all it is. An hour a day. You can do an hour a day. <laughs> um, Blair, can you talk about uh, BIT and maybe, because um, I don't think that we've shared that with uh, the cohort yet, but can you talk about how that can benefit them? Oh, you mean uh, Blacks and Technology? Yeah. Yeah, um, I don't know if you guys have heard of Blacks and Technology, but it's at blacksandtechnology.net. Uh, the guy that I pretty much call my brother started that like, I don't know, 12, 13 years ago. Um, they have a very healthy Slack channel and the guy who runs it, if you're if you if if you are an African American or Black or whatever whatever do you want to term it or person of color, um, and you're in technology, you should be on there. Um, the whole community is about helping through interviews, um, finding people jobs, or learning. There's all kinds of stuff. There are um, different events that are going on. They have. Um, um, They've got these like satellite offices in different cities, but they have kind of a major thing on Slack. So um, I say get involved. Um, you know, it's also fun. It's like you can build a community of people across the country who look like you, who talk like you, who laugh like you. I mean, everybody's welcome, of course, but it's, it's kind of a safe place and technology for all of us to go. And there are people who literally just jumped in the industry to like, I would consider myself an old head in the industry, but trust me, I'm not. Cause there's some people in here. I'm like, yo man, he, 
he's 70 years old and he's still like dropping knowledge and, and, and code and all this other stuff. So it's, it's a wonderful place. Um, I, I didn't put that on here, but I'll make sure you guys have that. You guys have that information and, uh, and you know, I'll even send a note out to, um, um, uh, my good friend, his name's Greg Greenley, and he knows just about everybody black in technology in the United States. He's, I call him the mayor or the governor all the time. So it's, it's a good place for you to, uh, um, to join. And, um, you know, it's, 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 it's a great learning space, but it's also a great fun space and safe space. So I mean, I've learned a lot from a lot of people there. Um, again, we don't know everything and everybody has a different experience. And uh, I mean, I've been introduced to a lot of different stuff just from, you know, talking. And there are people that are developers, managers, directors, VPs, uh, founders of companies. Um, I don't know if you guys know uh, uh, Popcom. Uh, uh, there's a lady named Dawn Dixon out of Columbus, Ohio. Um, she's African American. She's raised uh, maybe three or four million dollars for a smart uh, kiosk that uses facial recognition and blockchain. Um, she's on there all the time. I mean, you know, I, I've known her for a while, but um, you know, they're all people are of all levels, you know. I mean, she's a multimillionaire. She runs five companies. You know, she's she's always helping people. And a lot of people are running companies. They may have open uh, uh, job recs. And they may literally come on and say, hey, you know, we've got XYZ available at my company or in my department. Please apply here. So there's a lot of that there. So you guys, you should be on that. So. I just dropped the link uh, for the Slack channel in the chat and also for Popcom. Okay, cool. Yep. Um, so if anybody has any other final questions before we wrap up. Okay. All right, if not, um, thank you so much, Blair. This was really awesome. And I know everybody learned a lot. I definitely learned a lot too. Um, and I will share the slides with everybody once you send those over. Um, and the recording will be available probably Saturday. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And right. everybody is saying thank you in the chat. I know you can't see it, but oh, there, okay. everybody is saying thank you. <laughs> hey, glad to have it. And stay in touch. So. Thanks.